My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I love building my friends, just trying to make you some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate, teach you. So call me, 1-800-743-CBC, or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Every time it looks like they're done selling, they come right back. Every time you get comfortable, some sector crushes you. Tech Wednesday, industrials yesterday, energy today. It is brutal, and it is completely exhausting. <laughs> And that's how I feel about this market. Well, we got some temporary relief today, even as the Dow ended up dipping 38 points. S&P advanced 0.22%, and the Nasdaq finally rallied a little, up 1.43%. Oh, today was a roller coaster as usual. We started strong, then got hit hard by sellers in the middle of the morning, right as we were doing our morning meeting call for the CMC Investing Club. As usual, it began at 10.20 a.m., and the market had been looking really good when Jeff Marks and I prepped for our 10-minute show. But by the time we started, the averages were beginning to get crushed. And when we finished our 10-minute show, the market had rolled over entirely. That moment led to a tremendous amount of towel throwing by what I call the dip sellers new group. The beleaguered and depressed investors who can no longer take the pain, so they just dump everything into any weakness because it just hurts too much. But once they're done, the only sellers we had left were the ones swung away the oils, which is what you'd expect with crude down to more than seven bucks. By the way, that's very positive because lower oil prices are the most visible sign that we're actually making some progress in the fight against inflation. That led the averages to rebound, a rebound that even allowed Adobe to erase most of its decline after last night's allegedly disappointing forecast. Of course, then we dipped again near the close because this is a very tough moment. And nobody likes going long into a three-day weekend these days. Today's rebound even encompassed big tech, which has been one of the worst groups out there, while ditching the oils all day. Good news for Jay Powell. He needs the win because, you know what, he's going to Congress next week to answer questions from the House and Senate. Powell needs to say something positive about the downtick in oil, as it's the largest and most visible source of inflation. Longer term, I don't really think the price of oil can stay down unless you get a peace deal in Ukraine and Russian crude starts flowing back to the West. That's why I like the oil stock so much on weakness. We even did some more buying of the high-yielding oils from my travel trust. You can follow by joining the CBC Investing Club. I know the White House likes to whine about the oil industry, but they don't have enough votes in Congress to do anything punitive. You should join up and see which ones we think are right right now. Now, I figure when Powell is on the Hill, he'll just reiterate what he said at the press conference over this week. I hope he sticks by his decision to stamp out inflation by any means necessary, even to the point of causing lots of layoffs. But I know he'll take a lot of heat on that in the House. We're now entering the roughest part of any Fed chairman's job, where he has to outright admit that he's prioritizing the fight against inflation over job creation. That is never an easy pill to swallow for public servants. Of course, others will pummel him for being too late in his efforts to hit the brakes on the economy. There's just no winning for Powell right now. He has to accept his pinata status until we get some inflation relief in the form of softer numbers all around. He especially needs to see oil keep coming down, although, like I said before, I doubt that's in the cards. Markets should be closed Monday in commemoration of Juneteenth, when the last of America's slaves were freed in Texas. Amazing. It took two months after the Civil War was over. A disgrace that we must commemorate and remember. Tuesday, we get results from Lenar, the big home builder. This sector's been rolling over for months thanks to higher mortgage rates, but it hasn't suffered much in terms of stock downgrades, buys to holds. This morning, though, Toll Brothers finally got hit with a downgrade after having already fallen 45% from its highs. I think the bear case is still alive and well, though. The cost per home is too high, and I wouldn't be surprised if the analysts take this opportunity to downgrade Lenar, too. Now, the most controversial home builder out there of all is KB Home because it has the lowest price earnings multiple in the entire S&P 500. It sells for a little more than two times earnings. Now, of course, that means that, well, usually means that the estimates are way too high. I don't want to speculate, but if Lennar doesn't go down after Rio, after reports, I'm going to tell you it'll give you a green light to buy some KB on Wednesday, because it might really be the bottom for that stock. Hey, speaking of Wednesday, we need to tune in to a company called Corn Ferry. Now, I haven't cared much about this executive recruiting company for ages because it's delivered a slew of good numbers and nobody seems to care. But now we have to see if there's turnover everywhere, including at the top. Right now, every single portion of this labor force is starting to feel the heat of Jay Powell's wrath. And I want to know if they even realize it. Corn Ferry can shed some light on the subject. Plus, more important, they have tremendous compensation surveys. The Fed won't stop tightening until we see weakness across the board, including wages at the executive suite. If we don't hear of any weakness, then you know Powell's still got a longer way to go than we think. 
Thursday's chock full of big name reports, starting with Darden, parent of Olive Garden and Capital Grill. This stock's been hit with multiple price target downgrades. Uh, however, no actual downgrades. And that's what matters. Remember, there's a price at which Darden represents real value, although we might not be there yet. I expect a disappointment because of food and labor inflation coupled with an increasingly cash-strapped consumer. When I used to interview Darden's old CEO, he always said the business was sensitive to oil prices. If that's the case, downgrade city. After the close on Thursday, we hear from FedEx, which rallied nicely today, as it did all week. The shipping company has changed up management, announced a sizable dividend increase, and added three board members because of activist pressure. I don't expect a good quarter, though, so maybe you take some profits going into the print. However, I do want to get FedEx's read on e-commerce. Is it still alive and well? Well, the aforementioned Adobe said it was. Remember, they reported a good number, they gave a good outlook, and a lot of people felt that that was just way too bullish. The analysts are skeptical now, but where the heck were they skeptical on Adobe when the stock was at 700? They get skeptical of 350? Sorry, cut in half, you got to get bullish. Finally, CarMax reports on Friday. Given that we're now on week number watch, a used car chain like CarMax can play an outsized role. Sorry for CarMax shareholders, but the market bulls need a disappointment. We also want to hear, get this, about repossessions. We haven't heard that term in ages. Crucial front in the war against inflation. Unfortunately, I think we're st we've still got a car shortage because of supply chain problems, so CarMax will likely have a decent but not great set of numbers. There just aren't enough yield calls to sell. So many things going wrong at once. I don't like having to root for disappointing earnings. But now that Jay Powell has made it clear he can only fight inflation by tamping down on, every, on demand for everything, well, that's what needs to happen. The bottom line, until we see a pattern of higher unemployment, lower consumer spending, and lower oil prices, just presume that you need to sell stocks into any rally because the Fed's going to make sure those rallies are temporary. That said, I think the economy is already weakened substantially here. So the pain might be over faster than you'd expect. Let's go to Steve in New York. Steve. Hi, Jim. How are you? Uh, long week, Steve. How are you doing? Definitely, I know. I'm doing great. Thank you, Jim. Good. Um, thank, thanks for taking my call. Thanks for taking my call. And thanks sure. Thanks for how hard you try for everyone, especially in these challenges. challenges yes, times. thank you, man. Sure trying. Let's go to work. Okay, my question is on Kohl's. Since June 6th, for a period of about three weeks approximately, Frontier Group, which is an owner of Vitamin Shop, Pet Supplies Plus, and other retail brands, has been in exclusive talks with Kohl's to buy them for $60 a share. Do you think this deal is going to go through? And if not, do you think another company will buy Kohl's? Well, not, do you think Kohl's on its own is good to own at this time? It has a okay, I, I don't really through. like retail here. Um, Kohl's is down a lot. If there's a deal, it would surprise me, I admit. Um, I'm uncomfortable owning anything when Target keeps going down, and that's the premier large box retailer. I am reluctant to own Kohl's. That's just the way I feel. Let's go to Katie in Florida. Katie. Hi, Kramer. This is Katie Jaramillo from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Nice. So I bought a line technology ticker ALGN when it was... Bueno, bonito, and barato. And I bought it at $202 a share. Then not too long after that, it went up to $737 a share. And I was up $20,000. But now it's back down, and it's barato and no ASL bueno. Right, right. You yeah. know, some, you know, Katie, I was going over with Jeff Marks. We were looking at our oil stocks. We were up so huge. We gave back big gains. And I want you to know you're not alone, okay? This is what's happened in this market. You did the right thing. You're thinking long-term, and because you weren't short-term, you didn't take that profit. What I'll advise you is this. As a line goes back up because it's not an expensive stock, trim it some. Trim some. Be, be happy with a $2,000 gain instead of a twenty. We all have to do this together. I soul-search it every minute. How did I let such a big game give, big gain go in such and such a stock? But I don't think short-term. And we have to be in this together and make sure we take some profits and let the rest run. And then we won't feel this way. Troy, North Carolina. Troy. Hey, Jim. Booyah from North Carolina. Booyah. Back. I want to go to North Carolina. A lot of good business there. I want to go see Tepper's uh, Panthers. Well, yeah, I, mean, hope, uh, I like hopefully Tepper, have a good not the season Panthers. This year. <laughs> eh, you know, got to make some changes. What's up? Uh, uh, just uh, want to ask you real quick about uh, a stock with a 6% 
four uh, percent yields and six times earnings. Does Intel is it okay to nibble here, or is it got further to drop? Well, I mean, you know, the semis are bad. When I saw what happened with Advanced Micro, where the stock was at 96 a week ago and now it's at 80, I can't count this buying Intel because AMD is taking it to Intel. There'll come a moment, but right now, uh, right now that group is so ugly. Well, let's see what Qualcomm says. That will help us decide. All right. Every time it looks like they're done selling, they come right back until we see higher unemployment, lower consumer spending, and lower oil prices just presume that rallies need to be sold. But maybe we get to the good part sooner than you think. On Mad Money tonight, energy stock's been stuck in a rut. But could a, fight, a flight to utilities help electrify the stock? You know I like the utes. I'm going to talk to the CEO. Then in the face of volatility, one of the most important strategies is to be diversified. So we are playing a very hard game of am I diversified to see if your portfolio passes the test. And as I just mentioned, Qualcomm stock has been under pressure this week. But is the company under pressure? I'm getting to the bottom of the recent action with the CEO. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.